Today I'm going to show you how to do wrist circles at the piano so you can play the piano with more ease and efficiency. First, let me show you a 15 second demonstration of why wrist circles are important at the piano. You can do this with me. Stick your hands out in front of you like this with the, with the elbows bent and now we're going to go hop back and forth like this. Okay, now do that really fast. Okay, now we're going to do circles right? It's so much easier. Now flip the other, other way around. We can do that really fast, much faster and much easier than doing this. And so that, my friends, is why wrist circles are important at the piano, and that's what I'm going to help you with today. I'm Dr. Kate Boyd, and I'm here to help you take your piano playing to the next level. This is the final video in my series that I've been calling five principles of piano technique or the top five technical things I teach my students. I've been creating a companion guide to go with this series of videos and I've been updating it after I make each of the technique videos. And so you can grab that and it's totally free in the description below. And if you're interested in this topic and you don't want to miss my future videos, go ahead and like this video, hit that red subscribe button below. Now let's get started. This video is going to be all about the wrist. First, I'm going to talk about why wrist circles are a key component of piano technique. Then I'm going to describe where in your literature you might use wrist circles. After that, I'm going to show you how to do them and I'll give you a few exercises that you can do at home. And finally, I'm going to demonstrate just a few examples of wrist circles in action in the piano literature. Now the job of the wrist and hand is basically to get the fingers into the position where they need to be in order to play the the next note. Now the default position of the wrist needs to be flat. We've talked about in the weight transfer video about dropping the wrist, but the normal default position is going to be parallel with the ground. Now the reason for that is because if you have a low wrist, you are going to put strain on the median nerve and the median nerve it runs from the shoulder all the way down the arm through the fingertips. Pressure on the median nerve can be caused by gripping something too tightly or by not letting your wrist be flexible enough. Having loose wrists when you play the piano will help you avoid injury by reducing pressure on the median nerve. It'll also allow your hand to move into position flexibly. It'll also allow weight transfer like I talked about on my weight transfer video. And it'll also allow the fingers to be loose and free because wrist tension also causes finger tension. When you play the piano, you're going to use wrist circles to group multiple notes together. Um, you're going to use wrist circles to span large intervals that you wouldn't normally be able to reach just with your hand. And you'll reuse wrist circles to effectively play leaps that are very quick like kind of like what we did at the beginning of the video. So here's an exercise for you. We're going to close the fall board of the piano. You can try this at home as well. Go ahead and put your hands on the fall board. Now my shoulder is loose, is very relaxed. My elbow is very relaxed. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to just trace circles in the air with my wrists while I keep my fingers loosely in contact with the fall board. First of all, I'm going in circles away from my body. So my right hand's going counterclockwise, my left hand's going clockwise. And now I'm going to go the other direction over the top and that way. Okay, so you can practice this and make sure your thumb stays loose and also make sure that you aren't collapsing your hand bridge like we um, talked about in the hand position video. Now what you can do is open the fall board and I'm going to show you a broken cord um, exercise that you can use and immediately apply this idea of wrist circles to and that is I'm going to do a C major four note arpeggio using starting on middle C. Okay now here's how I'm going to use wrist circles. I'm going to drop into the first note and come around. Then I'm going to drop always into my thumb here. So I'm tracing counterclockwise circles in the air with my wrist. Okay, and this is what it looks like when I isolate my fingers, just so you can kind of see the difference. And I feel the difference. I feel a lot more strain in my fingers, and this feels much more easy, okay? Using wrist circles is something that 
applies to all three of the principles that I laid out at the beginning of this whole series. So the first principle that I have is don't isolate your fingers. So how do wrist circles help with not isolating the fingers? Well, what happens is we're going to do a wrist circle and we're playing groups of four notes at a time with just one physical gesture. So that is how we're not isolating. The second principle is to take your fingers with you. Well, that principle is really about not keeping your hand extended um, and putting strain on it. So what we are doing as I do the wrist circle is my fingers are loosely, they're just coming along with the hand. They're not staying extended like this. So that is how I'm applying the second principle. And then the third principle is let go of the instrument. This wrist circle motion is used all the time in playing the piano because this is the way, one of the important ways that we let go of the instrument while we're playing. Because you're dropping in and I'm not grabbing with my, with my fingers, I'm using my wrist to release, to drop in and release weight. Keeping a loose and flexible wrist really helps keep the connection between your arm and hand uh, alive. Seizing up the wrist doesn't only cause an excessive amount of tension in your fingers, which it does, but it also basically cuts off the ability to transfer weight into the piano. So if your wrist is tight, you can't actually do anything with your arm and then your fingers are gonna be grabbing onto the keyboard. Now, another thing you wanna do when you use wrist circles is you want to make sure that you're using your wrist to align the fingers into their correct position like I t talked about on the alignment video that I made. And so you can see if I'm doing these four note arpeggios, I'm shifting the hand in these micro adjustments to get the fingers so that they are aligned with the key and my arm as I play. And also, as you use your wrist circles, make sure that you have a supported hand position, a ha good hand bridge, because you don't wanna be playing with a collapsed bridge because that causes all kinds of finger tension. And then you can't play with a loose wrist because, it's, because when you collapse here, it tightens the wrist by default. And then one other thing you wanna watch out for, and that is when you're doing wrist circles, make sure that you're just resting your fingers at the bottom of each key that you're not pushing in at the same time. That's kind of, it's hard to see, but that's what this looks like if I do this. I'm pushing down and then it's very tiring, right? I, I can feel pressure. And so the analogy I like to use is just the idea of walking. Like when you walk, you just rest your foot on the ground and that's what supports you. You're not stomping and trying to push your foot down into the ground. And so your fingers are walking along the keys, just gently resting at the bottom once the note has gone down. Now I'm going to demonstrate a few examples of where you would use wrist circles in the piano literature. I literally just finished listening to approximately 300 pre-college auditions and so I picked a few pieces that were some of the more popular selections in those auditions to demonstrate today. The first piece I'm going to show you is the beginning of the third movement of the Moonlight Sonata and that is broken arpeggios, just exactly like we practiced. So I'll show you what that looks like. If I play it faster. So as you play faster, the motion becomes smaller, but you're still doing it. So you can take this principle and apply it immediately to anything you're playing that has broken arpeggios in it, which is like so many things, or even passage work in order to group the notes. The second example I'm gonna show you is how to use wrist circles to span a large distance that you wouldn't normally be able to reach with the fingers. The example I'm gonna play for you is from a Chopin Nocturne, his very first one, Opus 9, number one, that I heard quite a few times in the approximately 300 auditions that I just listened to. And I'm gonna look at measure 19. This is very uh, typical piano writing. What this is, is we're starting low and coming up here and I'm making a counterclockwise circle with my wrist. Right, so this is what it looks like. So when 
when you do it, I mean, especially if you're not used to it, it feels like a giant, giant, giant motion. And again, the important thing to do is to not grab with your fingers at the same time. Try to kind of, and I call this phenomenon relinquishing control to gain control because people tend to grab on with their fingers to kind of have the feeling like they're controlling every note. But in fact, it's the wrist that has to be in the driver's seat. So at first, when you start really letting go with the fingers, it feels like you don't really have very much control and you have to then kind of trust that the wrist is actually going to learn how to drive, how it, the wrist is going to actually learn how to do the steering in this case. Just make sure that the fingers are loose as the wrist does its circles. Now the third example I'm going to show you is using the wrist to play very fast jumps. This is akin to the example we did at the very beginning of this video when we did down, 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 down versus circles. The example I'm going to show you is from the Brahms Rhapsody in G minor, opus 79, number two. Again, a very popular piece. And I'm looking here at measure nine. In the left hand, we have these octaves, right? These very fast, very difficult triplets. And it looks like this. So what I'm doing is I'm doing tiny little wrist circles counterclockwise, dropping, and then, right? And so that's, so it looks like this. I'll do it in slow motion first. Right, so faster, it looks like this. And so what I'm doing is I'm using my arm to measure the distance, to get me where I need to go. And the only way I can do that is really through wrist circles. Because if I do it the way that I, the down, down version, it's so much harder because it's like this, everything's down. And in the left hand, right? So using your wrist to group the notes. So what piece are you working on now? I'm so curious. How are you gonna apply this idea of wrist circle technique to the piece that you're working on? Let me know in the comments. Also, if you like this video, you know what to do. Just like it, subscribe to my channel, and share it with somebody who you know will benefit from it because that's gonna help me help more people. So I'll see you next time and happy practicing.